Hello, in this video, I'm going to tell you about the sciatic nerve, sciatica, and piriformis syndrome. Uh, so first off, where is the sciatic nerve? It is the largest branch of the sacral plexus, but more than that is the thickest and longest nerve in the whole body. It supplies the entire lower limb except for the anterior medial thigh, so the portion of the thigh that's toward the middle and in the front. Uh, it travels all the way from the low back, where we see in the picture here, all the way down the whole posterior lower limb or the whole posterior leg, all the way down to the bottom of the foot. Um, so the sciatic nerve is actually composed of two separate nerves that are enclosed in a common sheath. Uh, so those two separate nerves are the tibial nerve and the common fibular nerve, which is also referred to as the common peroneal nerve. Um, so those two divisions or these two parts of the sciatic nerve actually separate just above the knee. So we could see in the picture here, this big thick yellow piece here, that is the sciatic nerve and it's traveling all the way down. And just before we get to the knee, it separates into the tibial nerve, which keeps going all the way down in the calf. And then it kind of loops around and goes down to the sole of the foot. Uh, then the common peroneal nerve wraps around uh, just around the, the neck of the fibula. Uh, so it's wrapping around the lateral side of the leg, kind of moving to the front where it then supplies the knee, the anterior and lateral portion of the leg and the dorsum, meaning the top of the foot. All right, so what is sciatica? <sighs> this is a frustrating term because it is nondescript, it is very generic, and it doesn't give us enough information to help somebody solve this problem. Uh, so it's a very generic term, meaning any inflammation of the sciatic nerve. Uh, usually it's we find it with a collection of symptoms that include burning, pain, numbness, or paresthesia. So like tingling, kind of weird sensations that can happen anywhere along the length of the nerve. Um, so it doesn't have to be along the entire length of the nerve. It can happen anywhere where the nerve is supplying, which is just about the entire extremity, just about the entire limb. Um, and so when someone has a diagnosis of sciatica, it's not very useful. It's not very informative because it doesn't tell us about what's causing the sciatica and therefore it tells us nothing about how it needs to be treated because you can't treat a problem if you don't know what's causing the problem. And that's especially true in a case like sciatica. So there are a lot of things that can cause sciatica. And so to improve the condition, you have to figure out which one applies to you or which one applies to your patient. And then you address that problem. Um, so I listed some examples of things that can cause sciatica. Uh, lumbar disc herniation is a big one. Um, mus piriformis muscle spasm, and I'll talk about piriformis syndrome on the next slide. That's also a very common cause, uh, but there are all sorts of things. So problems with the sacroiliac joint where your uh, sacrum meets your pelvis, that can cause uh, sciatica. Uh, scar tissue can form around the nerve roots. Any other problems with the nerve roots can cause sciatica. Uh, spinal stenosis, synovial cysts, tumors, whether... Um, any kind of tumor, really, if it's affecting the sciatic nerve, uh, whether it be benign or not. Um, and then other sorts of disease states that can affect the nervous system, of course, can affect the sciatic nerve specifically. Now, I want to focus on piriformis syndrome because this is a pretty common cause of sciatic symptoms, and it's one of the most easily solved if this is the cause of the problem. Um, it's more common in women than in men. I don't think, to my knowledge, I don't think anybody knows why exactly that is. Um, now, piriformis is how you pronounce the name of that muscle. And it is this little muscle right here. We're looking at the posterior pelvis here. So it's a little muscle that goes from the front of the sacrum and then it crosses to the back of the pelvis and then goes across and attaches to the femur here. Now, the reason this little guy is such a problem for the sciatic nerve is because the sciatic nerve in 87% of people, according to this study, and I'll, I'll add this study to my references um, when I post this video. Um, so uh, make sure that you look at the description to find the paper that this came from. 
Um, but they estimate that 87% of people have their sciatic nerve going directly underneath piriformis, where the other 13% have the part of the um, sciatic nerve passing right through the belly of piriformis. And then less than 1% have these other situations where the sciatic nerve is in various um, positions relative to piriformis. Now, the reason this matters is that if piriformis gets tight, so if it's really tense and it's overworking um, and it's really tense, it will press on the sciatic nerve. So in this picture, this is the 87%. So this is just the majority of people who have their uh, sciatic nerve underneath their piriformis. So if piriformis is tight, it will press on the nerve and it pinches it against the bone. And so that pinching is what will cause the inflammation of the nerve and all of the symptoms that look like sciatica. Um, but the, the problem is easily solved in this case by getting piriformis to relax. Just like if we had muscle tension in any other muscle in your body, you would treat it the same way. You, so you can improve the tension in piriformis with things like stretching. A really excellent massage therapist will know exactly how to target piriformis and help it to relax. Um, then other things like foam rolling, um, or you might even roll like instead of on a big tube foam roller, you could roll like on a medicine ball or something. Um, because if you roll on a ball, then that, that means the pressure comes to more of a point and you can aim right at the spot in your butt that is sore. Because if you move around and roll on the ball, you'll be able to feel when you get to the right spot because it will be very, very sensitive, very, very sore. Um, but if it is, that's kind of a good sign because it means you're on the right track and your piriformis is bothering you. Um, that means if you can get it to relax, help your piriformis feel better, then it can stop pinching your sciatic nerve and causing you pain in your whole extremity. Okay, so even for the 87% where the, the uh, nerve does not go through the belly of the muscle, it still is a common problem where we might be pinching the nerve against the bone. But then let's consider the other 13% of the population, they're going to be even more vulnerable to piriformis syndrome because with the nerve going right through the belly of the muscle, that means that it's being squeezed from all sides instead of just being pushed against the bone. Um, so that 13% is going to have more likelihood of developing piriformis syndrome than the average population that's in the 87%. Um, so in that case, that person would just need to be extra careful about activities that specifically aggravate their piriformis syndrome. Um, and when it fires back up again, then hopefully they will know that that is exactly what's going on. Now, I want to emphasize that when we treat any kind of condition, um, when it, any kind of musculoskeletal condition, any kind of overuse syndrome or things like that, like we're discussing here, Part of the process is figuring out what the offending activity was. So what is the thing that caused piriformis to become so tense in the first place? We need to figure that out and solve that problem um, because no amount of chiropractic or massage or foam rolling or whatever is going to solve the problem if you're still doing whatever the thing is that's causing the piriformis syndrome to begin with. So maybe it's the way you're sitting at your desk at work, or maybe it's the way you're sleeping at night, or maybe you're on your feet too much, or whatever it is um, that you might be overdoing that's leading to this problem. You've got to sort of figure that out. It might be some trial and error and some experimentation, but you need to figure out what is causing this and do your best to mitigate that. Um, so that as it's improving with your massage therapy or stretching or whatever else it is that you're doing, that you're not just continually causing the condition to, to occur again and again and again. All right. Well, I hope you learned something here. Thanks so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day. Bye.